Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, so I will be covering few videos which are talking about the miscellaneous topic about like React context APIs, React lazy loading in the routes and what is the difference between functional component and the class based component. After that, we will start talking about the React Redux or how to, what are the other options to manage the state. Maybe React hooks are enough to manage the state or if you are writing complex application where you want to persist the state somewhere, then you can use React Redux with local storage or in further videos, we will talk about React with Cypress for automation testing or React with Jest for writing the unit test cases. Okay, in this video, we are talking about the functional and a class based component, the major difference. Okay, so we have seen a lot of uh, examples somewhere we used class based component, somewhere we used functional component. I tried that we should use functional component more because classes were popular earlier also, but the functions are something new which we are using. We are using functional component, writing plain JavaScript functions, using these use state, use effect, use context, use reducer, these kind of hooks to make the functional component more powerful. So here, if you see this, this is the class based component extending react component. We have a constructor, we have a methods, we have a lifecycle methods, render methods. Okay, all these things you see in the classes. In the functions, it is just a function and it is returning some JSX. Okay, here also you can define the prop types based on the, the function name. Okay, so here we will be, we are using this use state, use effect to do all the same operations which we were doing in the class based component. Like use effect can do the same thing which component did mount, component did update is performing. Okay, all the other lifecycle methods from the previous version has already been removed. Use state method you can use to initialize the state for functional components. Okay, so there are many differences. If you see this functional component, there is nothing like this object now. You got, you got rid of, you, you don't need to worry about binding this everything to this. You can see the on click. Here we are doing explicit bind. Here either you write error function, you do, do the explicit bind or you put that in the constructor. This dot say hi equal to this date dot say hi dot bind this. You don't need to worry about this here. We can just directly write these arrow functions in the as a DOM events. Okay, no these keywords, no explicit uh, this object bind we are doing in the functional component. We are using these hooks. So if I just talk about what we, how we are writing these components. So class based component and functional component are kind of different now. And with the introduction of these hooks, we are doing a lot of things with the functional component. So if I just talk about class based component, it will be extending create dot component and here we will have a render function. This is the definition of class based component, this is the definition of functional component. Now with the introduction of these hooks, we can actually use, I mean anything, data comma set data, these pairs you have to use. And you can use this huge state hook. Initialize this with some object. Here we are actually writing constructor or you, you can just say simply state. There are many ways to initialize the state. Either you write constructor. Okay, in the constructor, you can initialize the props. And here, I mean, you can initialize the state something like this also. And the, otherwise, you can also use this mechanism to initialize the state. Now, here we are using a lot of different lifecycle methods like component did mount, component will unmount. When the component is getting destroyed, you can do something here. Should component update, which we generally don't use, but if you wanted to do particular condition check here based on the previous props, you can do that. And here we have new slat lifecycle method get snapshot before update to access the DOM before the final update is happening. Get derived state from props. Okay. So it is get state from props, I guess. If I spell it right. So these lifecycle methods we have, right? Now, if we talk about this functional component, we just have a use effect. 
which can take care of a lot of things what these different life cycle methods are doing here we are passing dependencies and these dependencies are doing a lot of things so whenever anything is getting changed in these dependencies this life cycle methods can update i mean this use effect will update so this here you can pass props here you can pass state here you can pass anything whatever you see that it can change and that can affect the component so this use effect will trigger once so it is same as like component did mount but if some, something is getting changed and you want to trigger it then whatever we are doing in the component did update that same thing we can do here in the use effect based on particular change if i wanted to do like okay i have something like data dot name based on that i wanted to trigger this then i can execute this use effect hook okay and component will unmount whatever we are doing in this function this is equivalent to the component did unmount component will unmount so this get triggered when this component is getting destroyed so whatever the cleanup we wanted to do we can do here in this function currently we don't do anything we just return none okay this is use effect dependencies are important if you are passing dependency empty it means it will call triggered once it is component did mount if you are passing any dependency it can be a props it can be state okay it can be multiple dependencies data dot name data dot uh, password or anything based on that this will trigger okay so here we have a new set of lifecycle methods get derived state from props get uh, derived get snapshot before update should component update component will unmount component did mount okay these are called class based components here we are actually initializing the state either through constructor or either just writing this doc, either just writing state equal to this this is also a way to initialize the state for a component okay here we are using hooks so we talked about use state use effect similarly there are many other hooks use context use reducer uh, use effect use memo all these other hooks we are using use memo can be easily used with these hooks like if component is not doing anything it is just rendering it so we can uh, memoize that component so it will not re-render every time whenever the parent state is getting changed okay so we can use use callback and use memo hook to optimize our rendering process so use memo will actually return the calculated value so you don't need to calculate every time that function and use callback is returning that memoized function every time okay these are very important for the rendering process you can write a pure functions pure uh, uh, functions functional component so they will not do a re-rendering process based on the state update because they, they will be doing just rendering some content they are not doing any calculation they are not they are like uh, stateless components you can say and these functional components are purely functionals we are writing functions are doing everything we don't need to worry about how to deal with this object while do writing the dom events like if you are just doing a div on click so a lot of things you can do here itself here if i just trigger some event and i wanted to do something like set data and i wanted to update set data with some another object i can do it here i don't need to look for any other place like defining this event somewhere and then doing it right here we have to bind it with this object first like something like i will just talk about this this dot click equal to this dot click dot bind this this is the one way or you can explicitly bind here itself so what you are returning is do on click here you can do this dot handle click this dot click dot bind this is just another way right so there are a lot, lot, lot many advantages we are getting with the functional component, but that is based on use case, how we are uh, writing the code. Here you don't need to do a bind. If you are writing it in different way, like you are writing an arrow functions here, and then you are removing the need of writing this click. Now you can just simply write an arrow function and handle the data from it. You are not dealing with this object anymore, okay? So this is all. In the next video, we'll talk about some more miscellaneous items we have in React.